The first speaker is Xiaozhong Jing, who is at Langzhou University in the northwestern of China. She's the director of the Center for Particle-Laden Turbulence, um, Atmospheric Boundary Layers, I, I guess sandstorms, it's the single word that sums it up. Um, she is a member of the Chinese Academy of Science, and she is also an associate editor of the new journal, CUP, the Journal of Flow. So we look forward, Xiao uh, Chen, to your uh, talk on particle-laden uh, flows. Okay, okay. Thanks, the Chairman. And uh, good morning or good afternoon and good evening, everyone. I'm Xiao Jingzhen, the Director of Center for the Particle Land Flow in Nanzhou University of China. And uh, I'm also one of the associate uh, editor in chiefs of uh, flow, which is a new journal as the sister journal of JFM. Uh, as we know, JFM is one of the precious legacy and Professor Bachelor left us. Uh, he served as the editor-in-chief in, uh, of JFM for 40 years, making it become the top journal in the field of fluid mechanics. Now, the editor-in-chief of flow, Professor Juan, with us hope um, the flow can be become can become a high quality journal like JFM, but flow will focus more, focus more on the application of flow mechanics and will take short publication cycle. So I hope you all could pay attention to it. Okay, now let's come back to my speech. Firstly, I would like to say many thanks and a special gratitude to the chairman, Professor Paul Linda, and to the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity on such a special and a grand occasion to share or communicate my group's work. In fact, this kind of communication between China and the DEMPT was firstly promoted by Bachelor. In his famous monograph, some Chinese scholars' achievements, such as Pei Yuan Zhou's um, works on turbulence, are introduced. Besides that, Bachelor visited uh, uh, Beijing twice in 1980 and in 1983, respectively. In this Asia conference of fluid mechanics, he gave an invited talk on sedimentation and revealed the existence of an effective interactive force between two particles due to the relative diffusion of particle pair distribution and so on. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about a topic following sedimentation to show my respect for Professor Bachelor. However, what I concern is numerous heavy sand particles transported and settled in wind blown sand movements or sand storms. Those are high level number wall. And turbulence. As we know, in sandstorms, some particles carried by wind, by wind from far away, such as from a distant desert area, and some are local ones blown by wind. They are set in trajectories, sounds like this, respectively. Their main difference is whether the PW process 
like this is taking place. This PW process we mentioned here is kind of the interaction between the settling particle and the wall. So one of our question is, what is the difference in the modulation of turbulent structures by these two kind of settling particles? And another question is, what will happen after these particles settle down? In fact, one of the situation, uh, one of the situations arising from these settled particles is the yielding um, land forms like this. These deserts dual fields, these deserts or dual fields formed by sand particles sedimentation. Unfortunately, some sand dunes are movable. Like this picture show the farm show. Like this picture show, the farmer houses are buried by sand dunes after the sandstorm passing through, and these dunes already move to the edge of the city or even into the city. So one of very important issue is how to predict the immigration speed of sand dunes or how to predict the expansion speed of the desert age. To answer these questions, it is necessary to realize the simulation of the formation and the evolution uh, of these deserts. However, this simulation has not been realized because it is not easy to realize this kind of transcale simulation from particles uh, movement to deserts evolution. And uh, also it is a lot easy to realize the numerical simulation of the never stokes equations for the air phase flow in the particle land flow with high Lelos number. So what we are going to do is proposing a wind velocity model based on our field observation to make the simulation of the formation and the evolution of the desert a little bit easy. Now, let's start from the turbulence modulation. Actually, there have been a lot of studies on the modulation by particles, such as about uh, mean velocity profiles, about the uh, check terms, about the uh, TKEs, I'm sorry, about TKEs and about the uh, TKEs production and the dissipation and uh, so on. Also, there are, ex there are existing some uh, researches on the modulation of turbulence structures in, in particle land flow by experiment and by DNS respectively. These existing studies found these factors have important effect on turbulence modulation, such as such as such as the particles mass loading, volume fact fraction, and their diameters, as well as the Stokes number and the Lelos number, and so on. But it has not been paid attention to the effect of PW process. In our opinion, the PW process is also one of the main factor in turbulent modulation. To confirm this, a series of experiments are conducted in our wind tunnel. One is about the bottom releasing 
particle lander denoted as case one in which the sand particles are blown from the sand band on the bottom wall of the wind tunnel. Another is about top releasing particle land flow denoted as uh, case two in which sand particles are feed as uh, some, some particles Sand particles are settled from a feeder at the top wall of the tunnel. Both particle land flows are measured uh, respectively by four cameras arranged at eight meters from the inches of the tunnel to ensure the flow statistically steady. This is the main experiment parameters listed here. After this figure show the cross-section of the working region of the wind tunnel. And this is the imaging got by PIV for the clean air flow denoted as uh, uh, case zero used to verify the reliability of measurement result. Here are the comparison between our measured result denoted by black dots and the DNS result shown by black line. Besides this uh, local discrepancy arising maybe from the lack of time resolution since the small scale turbulent structures a lot fully resolved by PIV, the mean velocity profiles and the TKE profiles uh, we got uh, both agree well with the DNS result. The, these are the raw images of the bottom releasing particle land flow and of the top releasing one. In order to extract the air phase flows velocity and uh, the particles uh, velocities, the raw images uh, was uh, pre-treated. Based on the statistics of particles phase, the volume fraction profiles for both flow can be obtained. It can be found that both are very different. The first difference is the volume fraction of the bottom releasing flow shown by these blue symbols are lower, almost the two to five order of magnitude than that of the top releasing one. The second difference is near the Near the wall, the profile's slope changes smoothly in the case of bottom releasing flow and suddenly in the case of bottom releasing flows. The volume, for, the, the volume fraction increase suddenly means some particles are reintegrated into the particle land flow. Where do these reintegrated particles come from? In our opinion, they are the particles experience the PW process. In other words, these particles settled first from the top releasing particle land flow to the wall and then them and then rebound from the wall and finally enter it into the top releasing particle land flow again below uh, this height below this height so how to determine this uh, this height, 
what oh i'm sorry okay how to determine this height where the slope um, changes suddenly what we do is based on the pi with particles face pictures with upward and downward moving directions and accounting the numbers of ascending and descending particles number and uh, denoted by n up and n down respectively. Then their ratio gamma profiles are plotted for case one and uh, case, case two. The values of gamma for the top releasing flow or for case two shown by the render symbols change suddenly from almost zero to non-zero at this height, which means, which means that um, above this height, almost without ascending particles. This kind of change is also taking place in this slope, in its slope from zero to not zero under this, under this height. Denoted this height as Z plus C as the critical height of PW process taking place. And it is Z plus C is equal to 400 in our experiment. Okay, now let's discuss the effect of PW process on the mean velocities. Here the black line uh, is for the clean air flow or test zero and the blue line and the blue symbols are for the air phase and the particle phase of in case one and the red for case two respectively. From this figure, it can be found on the one hand, the blue lines is always under the black line, which means in case one or in the bottom releasing particle land flow, the air phase flow's velocity is lower than that of the clean flow since the particles initial, or since a part of air phase flow's energy is consumed to drive the particle leaf and the moves from the bottom. However, the red line is not always under the black lines. It is above the black lines in, in this region because the total initial of the top releasing particle land flow is greater than the air clean flow in this region. So the decrease of their, their velocities due to the wall shear stress is slower than the air clean flow in this region. On the other hand, also because of particles initial, all symbols, symbols or particles velocities are under the corresponding lines or lower than the air phase flows velocities at almost uh, all heights, but the red symbols are obviously lower than the red lines under this height only. And this height is Z plus equal to 400, which is just the critical height of the PW process, which is just the critical height of PW process take place. So we believe that it is those particles 
that went through the PW process and uh, reintegrated into the top releasing particles and then the flow under this height and the max, the mean, mean values of all particles velocities reduce obviously. And in the same time, max the LFS velocity decrease faster. So PW process accelerates uh, the annual, the attenuation of the velocity of the air phase and the particle phase in particle land flows. Next, let's discuss the effect of PW process on turbulent structures. Here shows the contours of spatial two-point correlations of air phase flow fields. For case one, case, case zero, case one and the case two respectively in the bottom and the middle of the log layer, both are lower than the uh, critical height Z plus uh, uh, equal to 400, which means their existing PW process marked by the pink lines, pink lines. The white lines is drawn the outline of turbulent structure. From the left, from left to the right, you can find the streamwise scale increase since the lower the head, the stronger the PW process. And compares the figures in second line um, with ones in third lines, the scales are smaller or even or even difficult to be identified since PW process in the bottom releasing particle land flow is stronger than ones in the top releasing process, uh, top releasing flows. So the PW process in particle land flows makes the turbulent structure scale reduce or even broke down. Now, let's talk about the um, wind velocity model based on our field observation on sandstorms. This map shows the number of sandstorms in China per year. Here is Nanzhou city and there are more than 600 uh, kilometers away from Lanzhou city is the region with high frequency than sandstorm events. It is that, it is that there we found a dry lake named as Qingtu Lake. It has been dry for decades. On the lake bed, we set up an observation array called as Qingtu Lake Observation Array or a QLOA. In front, uh, in front of the QLOA, about 300 kilometers squares, the bed is very flat, and the surface layer thickness delta is about 70 to 200 meters. The friction nailos number re tau is 10 to the power of 5 to 7, and the average diameters of sand particles is about 200 micrometers. This is a photo of QLOA, which consists of a man tower and 33 small towers on which sonic anemometers were installed, as you see in this figure. The main difference of QLOA with a RAM 
S L T E S T in American is in stream wise. We arranged 21 small towers along the first and the second prevailing wind direction. So the four field measurements to send storms can be conducted. These are instruments on the towers. All measuring, measuring data were synchronized by GPS. And our measuring last five years and a total of 7,400 hours data are obtained. And 58 sandstorms were captured in which the maximum RE tau is up to 1.01 times 10 to the power of seven. And these are one of measuring the time series for wind velocity and the temperature in particle free flow. And this for the sandstorm lasted eight hours, including wind velocities, PM tense concentrations, and the electric fields, temperatures, and humidity. Before using this data, some pretreated, some pretreatment, some pretreatments should be conducted, including selecting stratific stratification stability data, the selecting out data with significant variation of wind velocity and the wind direction and adjusting the wind direction. Next, to obtain the high quantity data and to detrain manipulation with a low pass filter. We totally selected out 500 and the 95 hours of high quantity data, data including 422 hours data for clean air flows and 173 hours for sandland flows. Using this pretreated data, we compare our mean velocity profiles, TKE and uh, they lose shear stress for clean air flows denoted by these black dots. Uh, black dots with the existing boundary layer results denoted by black lines. And you can find all are in good agreement. And this are one of pre-treated data for the stream-wise and the world normal velocity in stable stage of sandstorm events. Taking one R as a group, we have more than 170 groups like this. And selected out 16 groups of data and uh, with uh, relative high PM10 concentration and obvious difference in friction wind velocity and uh, half for the model construction and uh, another half for the vegetation. And uh, here are the instantaneous control maps of one group's data for their velocity fluctuation by filtering wavelengths of one data. And the, these are for the large scale fluctuation, they reflected the uh, coherent structures and this is small, uh, scale fluctuations usually reflect the random randomness of the turbulent flow fields, which can be analyzed 
by power spectrum. Besides that, the modulation of the large scale motion on small one also important in order to formulate this wind fluctuation. One of famous models should be mentioned here. It is MH, MMH model proposed by Professor Marusik to predict the stream-wise turbulence statistics in world bounded flow and the TKE high order statistics obtained from the model are in good agreement with the experiment uh, and numerical result. However, MH model is used to this region below the middle of the northern layer. And what we need is not only below, but also above the middle of the log layer. Also, the MH model seems unlikely that can be used directly uh, to particle land flows because this small scale single in MMH model must be measured in the inner region of wind field, which is not easy to obtain, especially in the particle land flow. Besides that, the wind fluctuation in all normal directions has not been studied. It is also important, especially in the prediction on the sand flow flux. Even though enlightened by Professor Marusik's idea, we expressed the wind velocity model, not only in the stream wise, but also in the norm, world normal as a superposition of three parts. The first part is the small scale high frequency signals described by the camera spectrum. The second part is the large scale low frequency signals usually given by one hertz measurements at any given height. And the third part is the modulation of large scale motions to small scale motions. The modulation coefficient are calculated by this existing formulation. And in order to realize the prediction at any given height, the energy conversation factors denoted as the RU and the RW, as well as the clination angles of large scale structures, theta U and the theta W are introduced respectively. To characterize, to characterize the variation of TKE and uh, the phase of wind fluctuation along with the height. These parameters are filtered by eight groups of our measurement data we selected before, and uh, these are given by TKE at a reference position Z, zero. Okay, let's discuss the camera spectrum, spectrum first. Here is the comparison between the standard camera spectrum arrangulated from the single phase flow with our measured data in particle land wind fields. The difference from the stream wise and for the world normal components are more than 10% and 25% respectively. Having revised these six coefficients with the least square method based on our measurement data, the modification camera spectrum 
are in good agreement with the measured result and the relative error are reduced to less than 8% and 10% respectively. Then determine the modulation coefficients based on our measurement uh, data, which is denoted by dots in this figure. Having considered the variation of the modulation coefficients with the height, the fitting formulas of the modulation coefficients are obtained. They are fitting uh, correlation coefficients are greater than um, 0.9. Now, let's uh, determine the inclination angle of large scale structures. Based on our measured data, we find the inclination uh, angle in stream wise and in world normal directions are different. In this figure, right square represents the mean shift of RUU peaks along the streamwise direction with the relative height delta ZI and the other points denoted the result of world normal structures RWW. The nice are fitting result uh, the the nice are the fitting results. The fitting correlations are 0.98 and 0.91 respectively. The slope here are the inclination angle theta u is 17 degrees larger than that of clean air flow fields and uh, Theta W is uh, uh, 28 degrees for delta ZI uh, higher than five meters. And uh, for delta ZI uh, lower five meters, the offset is approximately zero. Okay, for the energy conversation factor RU and RW, the TKE at the given height is uh, are filtered, are, are fitting um, by eight groups of major data. This our fitting result and the fitting correlation are, are greater than 0.9 and 0.95 respectively. So far, the all parameters in our wind velocity model of particle land flow fields have been given. Here, let's check our model's accuracy. These are instantaneous flow fields predicted by our model, and these are measured one got by our other eight groups measurement data. It can be found our model has good accuracy for the predictions of streamwise and the more normal wind fluctuations in quantity. And these are about the energy spectrum for the predicted shown by nice and for measured shown by symbols at different height in streamwise and the more normal directions respectively. Both agree well uh, in quantity. Here are the comparison about the time series of wind velocity. The blue and the pink lines are prediction result in streamwise and the world normal directions respectively. And the red and the pink lines are measured result. It can be found that their peaks and their draws matched well. And their amplitude are almost close to each other. So we can conclude that our model can give a good prediction 
of the stream wise and the warm normal wind fluctuations in particle land flows at any height. And since our model requires only one hour duration measurements of wind velocities at any given height with uh, one hertz anemometers, which is easily achieved by meteorological measurements. So our model is a convenience to practical application. One of the application of our uh, model is in the repro reproducing the formation and the evolution of sand dune fields with hundreds of square kilometers uh, due to the settlement of sand particles. As we mentioned, the quantitative calculations or simulations from particles motion to the uh, uh, from particles motion and the settlements to the formation of evolution of wind sand flows and then to the form to the formation of uh, and the evolution of uh, sand dune fields uh, trans scale issue both in space and the time scale. Here the time scale the time scales range from a few seconds to decades. And the spatial scales range from hundreds of micrometers to tens of kilometers. The direct simulation that is calculate the particles motion one by one, just like the first principles um, modulation. Uh, first, the principles calculation may be impossible. It is not only because of computers limitation, but also because of the different patterns, the different mechanism governed by different models, which is the typical features of trans issues. Our simulation starts from dividing the simulation region into a lot of small elements called as the sand body elements or SBE. The region as shown in this figure, for example, may, for example, maybe 100 square kilometers is generally flat sand surface, sandy surface with slight but randomly distributed uh, fluctuations. And the area of SBE is pre-given. For example, maybe one meter times one meter, but the SBE's thickness must be obtained, obtained by calculating the sand flow's flux. The evolution time T, for example, maybe 50 years is also divided into a lot of time interval, delta t, which can be pre-given also. For example, maybe one r. Okay, the first step of our simulation is calculating the sand flows, the flux of each SBE in each delta t one by one. Usually, the sand flows flux is calculated by solving these equations for sand particles movement and solving the never stokes equations for the flow fields. And the effect of particles, um, particles on the flow fields should be considered, which makes both coupled. However, it is not easy to get to the solution of these uh, equations, uh, not only by DNS, but also by LES, since I in tau much higher and uh, since the bottom bed is erodible. Once the wind velocity are packing by our model, it will be much easier to get 
the sand flux as well as the sanitation duration and the distance on each sand body uh, elements in one delta T. It should be noted that in this first trans-scale simulation, two statistics uh, quantities, the, that is the uh, splash function and the probability density function of liftoff the particles velocities uh, must be used, which usually are determined by wind by experiment in Winterno. Here is the comparison between the experimental result denoted by symbols with the predicted sand transport rates denoted by lines in which red for our model's result, green for rain's result, and black for the Bagno's result. Bagno is the founder of or pioneer of wind blown sand physics. From this figure, it can be found that the predicted result based on our model agrees with the experimental result much better than others. For example, when the frictional wind speed is 0.4 meters per second, the relative error um, between the range result and uh, the experimental uh, res experiment result is about 26.7% uh, uh, and the R's is less than 8%. Having calculated the, the sand flows, the second trans scale is from sand flows to one SBE to determine the thickness of for every SBE in which uh, two new statistic quantities, that is the erosion probability and the covering factors are derived by analysis, the surface erosion of one SBE, which depends on the rebound and the deposition probabilities of particles in wind blow um, sand flow. Then to get the thickness of SBE, I will skip this due to the time limited. And the third transcale simulation is from the SBE to the new field in which I'm sorry, in, in, in the, the third trans scale, the third trans scale simulation is from SBE to deal fields in which we need to know the transportation distance of SBE in each delta Tn. So the fifth uh, statistic quantities, that is the transport factor is derived by analysis on the transportation process of particles in SBE. This is for the different citation duration in one delta Tn. And this is the sedimentation or deposition mass of particles distributed on different certain uh, distance in delta Tn. We call uh, this distribution as a transportation factor. And finally, based on the principle of conservation of mass center, we can get uh, the transportation distance. Using this simulation scheme, uh, quantitative simulation uh, from particles movements to the dual fields is realized. Since the whole process consists of three skip up scaling leaps, which is similar to the triple jumps, we call this uh, trans scale simulation as the trip jump model. It should be mentioned again that every upscaling leap 
depends on the statistics analysis on the dynamics of sand groups, including collision and the splashing process, surface erosion and the deposition, and so on. So the statistic analysis is very important or is a key step for trans issue simulation. Based on our trip jump model, we get our simulation result, which is uh, transverse dune fields, both are very similar. This is a Bakan uh, dune fields, both are similar too. And this figure show the dunes migration speed uh, varying with the height of sand dune. Here, the black lines are our prediction uh, result, which are close to those colored symbols denoted as uh, uh, observation result. And this is the result about the dunes height also in good agreement with the field observation. Based on our simulation, the expansion speed of desert can be got, which decreases with the increasing of the vegetation coverage and the increases with the wind speed, speed. This prediction will be very helpful uh, for desertification control. For example, this region is at the edge of desert in Northwest China. And uh, these square lattice are made by weight straw hood to prevent sand particles taking off. In practice, the lattice, sorry, the lattice have been paved in whole region just like uh, just like this, just like this figure show. Is this whole cov covering the best way or best pattern using our simulation on the dune fields? We found this pattern like the strip it has the same function to this one, but reduce the cost but nearly Seventy uh, percent. For example, the covering area is thirty kilometers square is reduced by twenty kilometers square using this way we su just suggested. The cost will save twenty five million yuan. Okay. In summary, uh, I will give the summary. The turbulence effect in wind blow sand movement have been revealed for the two aspects. Aspect. And uh, the wind tunnel, uh, the first is the wind tunnel experiment suggested uh, that the PW process is a significant factor considering the modulation of the um, particle on turbulent structures, that is PW process makes the VLSMs uh, in particle land flows uh, decrease significantly or even be broken down near the wall in particle land. The second is we propose the wind velocity model based on our, our field observation and and the, this model is convenient to be uh, used. And the best of our, our wind velocity model, a uh, trip jump model is proposed to realize the trans scale and uh, quantity simulation of the formulation and the evolution of the sand dune fields and uh, also realize the prediction of expansion speed of the desert. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to say, based on our group's experiments in studying wind blow sand movements for more than 20 years, we found that the advance in fluid mechanics in the 1930s 
represented by the planter's boundary layer theory, theory provided a fundamental for half empirical and half quanti quantitative analysis of wind blows and physicals based on experiment measurement. After, after that, the theory of the two phase flow and the RANS and the RANS or LES solution of the Neville Stokes equations lay a foundation for statistical analysis and the numerical investigation on the wind blows and the physics. Ever since the beginning of this century, new advances in fluid mechanics especially the high levels number world turbulence theory gave an insight to the integrated quantitative analysis of wind blows and physicals based on the modern turbulence theory. So we believe that new concept, new theories and the new methods in fluid mechanics can continuously promote the quantitativeification and the precision of other disciplines more effectively. Okay, thanks for your attention. And thank you for a super presentation. Um, very impressive results on uh, measuring partly, partly particle laden turbulence and amazing um, experimental facilities um, that you have out there in northwestern China. Uh, very much about your wind tunnel um, experiments. In your case too, when you were adding particles from the top, did you have to worry about balancing the input of particles with the output from the tunnel? Okay. So uh, for for these questions, uh, the some details I would like to ask uh, uh, the Dr. Guo Hua Wang to give the uh, explanation because uh, the experiment uh, uh, has done by, by Guo Hua Wang. Hi, John. I I want to uh, answer these questions. Um, before we uh, conduct our experiment, we measured uh, the maximum capacity of balanced sand flux uh, of the system. According to the result, uh, we found the max uh, uh, the maximum of the sand flux is thirty six gram per second, and uh, in our uh, experiment, uh, the uh, sand feeder. Uh, uh, input the sand uh, uh, sand value uh, sand flux is lower than this value. So um, in the following experiments, the input and the output of sand are balanced, and uh, no sand no sand deposit uh, deposited on the wall. Okay, um, in in the first case, you started with a sand deposit on the wall. And that would be slowly eroded, I guess. Mm. Uh, in the case one, the sand flux does, uh, does not uh, evolve, and uh, does not evolve with time. And uh, uh, in the measurement, in the measured field of the view, view and uh, uh, the amount of sand particles in, into and out uh, is constant. Okay. 